Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, aka the guy who's a daemon in the sack, and this video we're breaking down the new Game of Thrones spin-off A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. Recently announced, the social media team behind the show have been slowly putting out teasers, and we recently got a title reveal over the top of a map. But what exactly is this show, and what can we expect to see in it? Well, that's what we're going to be breaking down in this video, so come join our house as we get into what the premise of the book is, and also talk about everything we know about the show so far. This will probably contain spoilers, but I'm going to try and keep things centered around what the show is, rather than what the big deaths are. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the thumbs up button, and make sure you subscribe for videos like this every day. But out of the way, a huge thank you for clicking this, now let's get into A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. The book itself was released back in 2015, and it's basically a collection of the first three Duncan Egg stories by George R. R. Martin. The first one we'll be centering around was the first published in 1998, but they were all brought across in this short collection. Now these are called The Sworn Sword, The Mystery Knight, and the first of these which is titled The Hedge Knight. That is the book that this series is going to be based on, with its full title being A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, The Hedge Knight. Going to be the longest title ever and a nightmare for my YouTube tags, but this narrows it down to what this series is going to be about. Now this is set roughly 90 to 100 years before the events of the original Game of Thrones, and it's sandwiched right between the events of House of the Dragon and GOT. All the stuff with Rhaenyra happened 200 years before the emergence of Daenerys, so we are kind of getting this stuff in between to pad things out. I'd imagine that the cat's poor dagger pops up at some point, and we can kind of see how it ends up going from House of the Dragon and then into the main series. Now, I did say this wouldn't spoil any of the big deaths, but we do need to talk about one in order to kind of set up what the premise of the show is. The story really kicks off when a hedge knight known as Sir Arlen Pennytree dies, and then from here his squire Dunk decides to take over the reins and work his way up to competing in a tournament as a knight. Taking Sir Arlen's armour, horses, and everything he left behind, Dung sets out at Ashford, which is where the tournament will go down. Now, along the way, he meets a character called Egg, who he takes on as his squire. Egg is called Egg because he has a shaved head, and therefore, he looks a bit like an egg. See, that's how you get Dunkin' Egg, and this video is sponsored by Dunking Eggs. Son of a bitch, I'm in. Now, I haven't actually seen A Knight's Tale, I haven't seen it, but it's one of those films where I feel like I can imagine the plot, and what I imagine it to be is basically that. Now, upon reaching Ashford, Dunk's actually turned away because he can't really prove he's a knight, however, Baylor Targaryen steps in and then he vouches for him. Again, haven't seen it, just imagine something like that happens in that movie. Let me know in the comments below that it doesn't, because it probably won't, but yeah, that's what I imagine. Now, the tournament's a big event, and I, I kind of expect it to riff on the one from the main series and House of the Dragon. If you cast your mind back to how the man made his debut, then he did it by killing a horse after losing a joust. The event has a similar thing happen, with Arian Targaryen going crazy over losing, and in his frustration, he kills Sir Humphrey Honding's horse. This causes a lot of shit the games, because... It's a big no-no when it comes to etiquette. Now that night, Arian ended up being a usual typical Targaryen, and he beat up a girl which caused Dunk to leap to her defence. She was a puppeteer, and she plays a big part in the story with her being the apple of Dunk's eye. Now it's during this fight we get one of the big reveals with Egg, and we learn he's actually Arian's brother. Also, it might be pronounced Aarian, but moving on. Now it turns out that the shaven head was done for a specific reason, which was of course to hide his classic Targaryen locks. Egg Targaryen, and you can kind of see where that's going, as Egg goes on to be Egg on the Fifth. Everything kind of ramps up to a big battle between Dunk and Arian, which will likely be what this entire series is centred around. Now there's lots of things they can do with the series, and though it's probably going to be a short limited one, y you never know. The Dance of the Dragons actually doesn't go over that many chapters, and we've seen how they've turned that into a big season spanning series. I think what will likely happen is that, if this series is successful, then they'll probably adapt the other books that pop up in the collection. Unfortunately, this is going to be a show that's hit by the writer's strike. On a blog post that dropped April 17th, George R. R. Martin said that writing was well underway. During this, he revealed that the pilot script had been completed in full, and that the rest of the series was currently being worked on. However, it wasn't too long until the writer's strike hit, and this has slowed everything right down. Dropping another post, Martin confirmed the entire writer's room had been closed and that it would be shut down for the entire strike. So depending on when we get the resolution to this, all depends on when the show's going to be resumed. They've then got to write, cast, build the sets, film, edit and so on. 
going to take quite a while and I was thinking that the show would be released at the end of 2024 potentially. However, with the delays being ongoing, I think that it's probably going to be 2025 at the very earliest. It all depends when things get worked out by and at the moment there's also rumours that SAG could go on strike too. I think come next year we are going to see a lot of delays and coming off the back of the pandemic means it's been a rough time in Hollywood. I think with the release of this they might also do a thing to fill in the gaps between the House of the Dragon seasons which to me would be the smartest thing to do. So even if it was ready by 2024 they might not want to drop it due to that probably being a House of the Dragon year. Disney to me have been overdoing it with their multiple releases a year and I've noticed that it does kill the interest in the show. With House of the Dragon seasons taking about two years to make they'll probably do that one year and then potentially alternate with the rest of the Knights of the Seven Kingdom collection. Now George R. R. Martin has also teased there might be more Duncan Egg stories coming down the line. On his blog he said, Before we reach the end of the published stories, I will need to find time to write all the other Duncan Egg novellas I have planned. Just, just finish the main book first mate. F*** all this sh get the main, Get the main one done. Anyway that would mean that they have a lot of things to pull from so th this could even be a 4 or 5 season show that goes beyond just a 3 novella. By then they might also have the rumour Jon Snow series set up and we could get 3 Game of Thrones titles running concurrently. I think it might get to that point too as House of the Dragon was big business for HBO uh, and the Game of Thrones universe has gone back to being their flagship title. So good everyone forgot about season 8 which means it has to be one of the best shows of all time. Now we could also use this as a springboard setting things up like the Mad King and though that wouldn't be out for a while this show could explore the constant inbreeding that eventually led to his creation. The Targaryens still hold the throne at this point but we could continue to see the seeds being sown that caused it all to come crashing down. I actually think that's a great idea to set up these two characters in Duncan Egg and then we could follow them through their lives and see what they get up to. They could do something like The Mandalorian where it's a lone wolf and cub series which I think has an aesthetic that would be perfect for this show. They may even link things together with the House of the Dragon and Duncan Egg series where we see some locations being smashed up in the past and then revisit them further down the line to learn about what happened in the aftermath. Just hope Joffrey doesn't show up and drop some big spoilers because he actually ruined the end of House of the Dragon if you, if you go back and watch the main show. And I'm not going to spoil it here but it genuinely he ruins the entire thing because he's an absolute dickhead mate. Anyway let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you excited for the show? Do you want things to just go back to normal with the writer's strike? Yeah it's all a bit all kind of up in the air at the moment but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Now last month we also ran a competition giving away a copy of the Quantumania Steelbook and the three winners of that are on screen right now. If you want to support the channel for as little as 99 cents a month then please click the join button below and as a thank you you'll get access to early videos every week. Me and Greg from Real Rejects have also just launched a podcast which goes over movie and TV shows every single week. First episode's out now on Spotify, Amazon, YouTube and Apple Podcasts so if you want, you just want to kill two hours, you know you're going for a walk or you're going for a run, you're going to bed at night, you want something less to do then definitely go check that out right after this. If you want something else to watch we have another Game of Thrones video on screen right now where we go over what's happening in House of the Dragon Season 2. There's been lots of behind the scenes stuff shown so definitely head over there right after this. By the way, huge thank you for sticking through the video. I've been your host Paul and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.